day The sun will rise I'm looking the other way Just another day And I'm walking on by And I'm acting like it never happened But the frustration floods in through my darkest nights And my heart begins to sing And my body feels so numb Who's to say it's okay? Then you cry at how well they fly What in the world am I doing now? When they're bleeding pain, they're fighting pain Hello everyone, today I'm here to introduce Sachi Montgomery. We're very happy to have her with us. Can you tell us a little bit about yourself, Sachi? Thanks, Kaylin. Um, my name is Sachi Montgomery. Um, I was born and raised in Tokyo. I'm half American, half Japanese. Uh, ever since I was little, um, I've always loved to sing. And um, starting from my early teens, I started singing some solos and singing at open mics here and there. And um, from a few years ago, I started writing my own songs. And I think in this video you might be hearing this song called My Dear Friend, um, written by me. And that was a song I wrote after the earthquake and tsunami um, in 2011, the 311 incident. And it was a tribute to all those victims that were affected by it. And I was really happy that you guys were able to put it into the, the clip. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, no, we're very happy to have the song. Thank you. <laughs> and also Sachi joined us on our documentary shooting called Kamakura Bori. And here are a few short clips. So that seems to be the building where the craft craftsman is going to be in. So we're going to go in there and meet the guy. Oh, I remember this street now. I know this street. I've walked right in the middle here. You can cross here, I think. Oh, so during the springtime, this street is covered with cherry blossoms. I don't know what this street is called, but it's really pretty during the spring. This is a craftsman, Sakamoto-san, and he's going to take us to where he's going to make the art. So we're going into the car first. Okay, so we're on the car now. I have no idea where we're actually heading to. We, <laughs> I thought we were gonna be in that building, but um, I guess we're going somewhere else. So we'll see where we're going. I'm a little excited. So I mean, what did you think? We got into a stranger's car and everything. You didn't even know. Mm -hmm. I mean, I was told, you know, that we were gonna be going to the craftsman's um, workplace. And so, you know, I was really excited and I was just wondering where, you know, what this place was going to look like. We were going into these small alleys and these narrow roads and, you know, I was looking at temples along the way and there's more greenery and it was quieter. And, you know, I was really excited and we got to this small house and I was expecting for a bigger, you know, almost like a factory where there was going to be like a lot of workers. But it was a small traditional Japanese house and, you know, creaky floors and wooden style housing right. and kind of reminded me of my grandmother's house in Shizuoka but um yeah it was really exciting because there were different rooms where they did different um, um work you know right like, I mean I didn't know it was you know a working place I mean you look at from the outside and you would never think someone's actually working in there take a look So this is where they make their crafts here. Wow, so look at this piece right here. There's already some design on it, sculpted, and there's some tools laid out here. I'm assuming these are the ones that he uses to carve the designs in. So basically he's going to show us um, the different process of making the um, kamakura bori. So he was explaining how there's different um, levels. So you start off with carving the design and sculpting it. So he's already pre-made a sculpted piece already. 
and now he's going to get this ready to be lacquered and glazed over it. So what he's doing here is he's applying the black um, glaze and as you can see he's actually now dusting it off um, and he, he's wet the cloth. And he's wiping off the dust and the powder and he's pol basically polishing over his piece and he's prepping this um, piece to be glazed over with the red lacquer later. Okay, so now we're looking at the Urushi Master inside this room. Um, the doors are closed because we can't have any dust going around moving and getting onto the product. So it needs to be in this contained room. And what he's preparing right now is he just got out some um, red lacquer onto the table and he's preparing himself to glaze over the bowls over there. He's just brought them out. So now you know the process, how rare it is to finish the product. How do you feel about it? Um, I mean, it's, it seemed really difficult. Um, like I said, there's different stages and I thought, you know, the most difficult part was the, the lacquering. Mm -hmm. And before they lacquer it, they have to actually put this powder on. And if they don't put it evenly, you know, the lacquer is going to be bumpy. The glaze is not going to look mm -hmm. nice. So, you know, there's this part where the guy, the master, actually has to put the powder on and it's called Ippatsu Shobu and he only has one shot to make it work. That sounds like an Eminem song. <laughs> but, um, um, so yeah, he's got like one shot to make this work and he puts the powder on and, and then he gets to glaze with the lacquer. But that part is, you know, really difficult if he makes it wrong, if he, does, if he gets some like dust on it or if it right. doesn't work right. then the piece is ruined so right. I mean Japanese people are very intense when it comes to perfecting their work we got a clip of what it puts show was like take a look <laughs>
何もできない僕がいて本当は一緒に泣き叫びたかったの記憶の中の君を探しに行きたくて My dear friend ここにいるって忘れない I do.